Hello and welcome to No Man's Sky, everybody. I am your host, Alon Paul, and we're going to be doing a new playthrough series starting with Worlds Part 1. Um, pretty sure that this playthrough series is going to continue on through Worlds Part 2. We're having to do this new series because our last save was uh, interrupted, unfortunately, by poor recordings. I don't know what happened, but unfortunately, the recording medium I was using on for, uh, had uh, destroyed some of the audio that had been recording. So we're going to be doing this new playthrough in order to get caught up. And I figured it was a good time to do it anyway with the new uh, update that we just had. Absolutely fascinating, beautiful updates. Uh, so we're going to really enjoy this one. So we're going to start out fresh and new. And for a lot of you who have never played No Man's Sky or are new to No Man's Sky, uh, this is going to be sort of a step-by-step -step process. We're going to go through the main storyline. And we're going to do it in, a, in kind of a story mode type atmosphere. I like to always read the information out loud and to act it out just a little bit. Uh, I don't do voices very well, but I will do some of the acting out just a little bit. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, I'm going to go ahead and choose play. And as the time goes by, we're going to go ahead and choose a new game, of course. And at the time we're doing this, Liquidators is about five weeks along. Uh, a few, pardon me, about a week, week and a half along, and it's still going. But uh, we're not going to talk about the expedition right now. We're going to talk about doing a normal save. Now, I could go creative and everything's free, but that would kind of ruin the whole aspect of how to play this. You can do a relaxed one if you wish. It is completely up to you. You can go to custom and make some really neat adjustments to it if you want as well. Uh, in this case, we're just going to do a normal playthrough uh, with the, all the normal uh, limitations to the game and everything like that, including uh, surviving and having to deal with those pesky sentinels and things like that. Uh, and we won't be doing survival this time. I've done that before. Let's just go normal playthrough and show you guys how it's done. So we're going to click on normal and get started. I'm not going to go through the settings of how to set up your game as far as your uh, button presses or... Uh, how your graphics should be set up, that is completely up to you and your particular system that you're using, the graphics card. You may be playing on a console, and how you set it up on that is completely different to how I'm setting it up on this. And I'm using PC through Steam, um, keyboard, mouse, the whole nine yards. I am not using a controller of any type. I'm not against it, but it is just my way of doing things. I've been playing on a computer for 30 years, so this is what it's going to be like, my friends. So let's get started on this. Here we go through the cosmos. Um, we are in the starter galaxy called Euclid. There are 256 galaxies at last time I heard. Uh, in order to get to most of them, you can just go to the center of each galaxy and make your way out. But the last two, I think it's 255 and 256, you can't get to unless you either know somebody or you have the coordinates to get there to get to a base on those systems. So let's get started. We're going to initialize. And here we go. At any point in time, if you have questions, please drop them in the comments section. If you have a time stamp that you are questioning as well, like this particular time point, what happened here, what did you do here, and how did you do it, by all means, drop me a message. I'd love to respond to comments. Just ask that you keep it clean, folks. So we are on a world that looks somewhat toxic, I'm going to say. I don't think. Maybe it is a hot land. Let me see. 72.6 degrees Fahrenheit, so I'm going to say no. So I'm going to think we're going to be toxic. There are different types of hazardous planets. Hot, cold, obviously. Toxic and irradiated. So it looks like the toxicity level is 58.8. So I'm going to say that it's a toxic planet. Okay. Now as we start out, if you look at the bottom left corner, you're going to get your... There we go. You're going to notice your hazard protection is already low. What you want to do is you're going to look for certain things. Follow what it's telling you to do, and we're going to go ahead and get started. We have some oxygen plants nearby. I'm going to go ahead and grab some. This is a hazardous plant, but the little balls on them are accessible. See the gassy pod? If you get them, you're going to get some oxygen. Early game, this is very useful to you. Stay, Keep your distance. When they explode, they can get you hurt. So let's grab some more pods. Back off again. And rush in. Got another one. I think there's one more on here. We've got a good amount of oxygen, though. Okay, stay away. I'll show you about that in just a second. There we go. Last pot. And then we're going to use our mining laser to take them out the rest of the way. And this will give us a little more oxygen. And there you go. So let's check our inventory. 
Our inventory shows that we have a damaged scanner. We're going to have to get that fixed with some ferrite dust. And it looks like we've got 188 oxygen. So we're in good shape as far as that's concerned. In the early game, your oxygen plants and your sodium plants are very important to you. Here's a regular oxygen plant you can pick up. And the next thing that's very important is besides, besides sodium is finding a cave. Now, before we find said cave, we really need to get some ferrite dust. We get them from rocks. We can't analyze it yet, so we're just going to get that, those rocks going now. And these things are carbon-based. You need a lot of carbon as well as you might imagine. So grab as much carbon as you can. Get about 100 to start with. That'll get you moving along. Not every planet is very uh, obvious to get these things from, so just be careful. Get some more ferrite dust, and we're going to need some sodium. See, our hazard protection is taking its time going down. We're in good shape as far as that's concerned. But we're going to need some more later. Now, you notice that little heat warning. If you keep it going for too long, it will overheat and shut down for a few seconds. But if you can keep going while it's hot, you can pick up resources just that much quicker. Okay, I think we've got quite a bit. How much do we have now? Let's check. 125. So we should have enough to fix our multi-tool over here. Yes, we do. So we're going to go ahead and do that. I'm just going to move this to a different spot for now because I want to get it out of the way. All right. So we have to scan to locate sodium. So we do that with the C button on our keyboard. Anything that has an NA is your sodium. Periodic table of elements, that is its elemental name or uh, abbreviation, I should say. So pick up those plants. There we go. We now have sodium. I'm going to grab some more from over here. It wants us to recharge, but that's okay. Let me grab some more sodium. I want to charge up a little bit extra. Okay, that's our jetpack we're using. We'll describe that in just a second. And I'm going to grab just a couple more gassy pods because that oxygen is really handy. There's three per, but I'm just going to get two this time. There we go. And then take out the hazardous plant for extra. Now we should have enough sodium now. If we hit the recharge button, which is X on your keyboard, you're going to notice your hazard disk protection is down to 13%. You can now charge it with almost all the sodium that we happen to have. All right, good. So the next thing is we've completed that. You hear by the music that it's giving you a completion ceremony. Distress signal detected. We want to look for where that is. You see it's pointing us in a direction, and it's over there. So we're going to head in that direction now. So follow what it's telling you to do. That's my best advice I could give you for this. And every now and then do a scan and pick up elements along the way. All the elements you can pick up are going to be very handy to you. Okay, even if they're just a little bit off from where you're walking. Like that C plus over there, that's called carbon. Well, it's condensed carbon is what that is. We'll come back to these things in just a moment. And as you run, in this case I use, you know, WASD as usual. If you run using the left shift button, you have an indicator on the left that shows that you are getting higher, if you will. See what happens when it blew up before I got it? That's the damage it can do. All right, so this is condensed carbon. It is actually way more valuable for you in all that you do. So go ahead and grab it depleted. I'm going to use regular carbon for now to charge it up because I have some. So there we go. Good deal. All right. So we're still heading in that direction, but we saw something over here that was very interesting. See these things here? These are known as ancient uh, navigation data is what they are. They don't always give navigation data though. See, that's navigation data it'll give, but sometimes you might get lucky and it'll give you something else. In this case, I wasn't so lucky, so I got what I could. Ah, a cave. And this is your other friend. Well, when you find a cave, you can go in said cave. Be careful of your jetpack when you go in. Watch the hazardous plants. These are hazardous, but they can give you about 10, between 9 and 12 um, of any particular item. There we go. There's another one right there. They attach to ceiling or floor. But you notice that my hazard protection just climbed up because I'm now inside the cave. So I'm going to suggest that whenever you come into one of these, get some, some of this stuff here, the cobalt. So if you shoot this cobalt from the stalactites that we have at the ceiling, we're going to get, you can see it, cobalt at the top right. You get about 
20 to 30 usually per stalactite. I'm just going to grab a few of this. I want about 200 for now. This is important to get because this helps you create something called a battery, an ion battery, which will allow you to recharge your hazard protection without using sodium. But you have to make them, and it requires both cobalt and ferrite dust to make them. Every now and then, one of these will give you something other than cobalt. You may run into one that will give you platinum, gold, or silver. The platinum is very valuable, uh, pretty valuable, pretty valuable, let me say. And the bottom ones, these stalagmites down here, will also give you cobalt. And the same rules apply. Sometimes you'll run into some that don't have cobalt. They'll have some other type of metal. Um, I'm not seeing any right now. Uh, let's see here. These flowers here give you marrow bulbs. We'll get to those later, but they're not important right now. Lovely music. I do like the music in No Man's Sky. They have added a couple songs, if I remember correctly, but not too many. All right. Doesn't look like we have anything else in here besides the cobalt. So I think... Oop, got another plant there. I'm going to go ahead and grab it. Sodium. That's what this one has. They'll either have sodium or oxygen, but it's always good to get them while you can. Cobalt. Some of these plants down here have carbon still. Okay, looks like everything down here has cobalt. You'll notice that there's some unusual plants down here too. That's these guys. These are called humming sacks. If you open them, they reveal... Well, let me open this one so you can see. They reveal something called an albumin pearl. You can pick these up, and they are semi-valuable. Early game, they only work about 10,000. You kept, kept, you know, obviously collect uh, 100 of them, and you, or pardon me, 10 of them. You can get 100,000 units from these. I'm going to go ahead and pick them up just for now. And it looks like we got all the pearls from that one. It still shows one there, but it's kind of a glitch in the system there. All right, let's head out of here. Oh, we've got some more of the hazardous flora. I'm going to go ahead and grab those. The extra sodium is worth it to me. Or oxygen, if it had oxygen. Good. All right, good, good, good. And again, the same rules apply if you get too close. It'll cause you problems. All right, there we go. We had a couple more albumin pearls over that way, but I'm not going to worry about it. It's time to exit. My suggestion on exiting, since your jetpack doesn't last long, is stay as close to the wall as possible so that you don't use any jet juice, as I call it. All right, so we are headed that way. Okay, let's get our next hazardous flora. All right, try not to shoot the animals. The, the big ones, they require an advanced mining laser to get, so we can't get those. So we're just going to get the little ones around it. There we go. And these are damaged containers that you find littering the landscape. You can get rusted metal from them, and I'll show you what to do with that later. And usually you can get some nice stuff from them. Like in this case, I got... Looks like just condensed carbon from that one. These canisters can sometimes carry nothing. Sometimes it's life support. Sometimes it's batteries. And these big ones you can't open yet until you get a special type of pass to open them. That's later on down the road. You also have these blue pieces here. These blue uh, dihydrogen crystals. These are handy. Grab them when you can. They don't give a lot per. But they're found in large quantities on most planets. And I'm going to grab a little more ferrite and a little more carbon while I'm here. There we go. There we go. All right. Let's head on to our signal source, it calls it. These things under the ground are called technology modules. If you're fortunate enough and it's close to the circuit surface, you don't have to dig for them. In my case, if I hold my E button down, I can pick them up, and it gives me something called salvage data. These are very expensive items. You can carry 30, 30 of them in the normal save mode, and each of them are worth about 52,000 units each. Very expensive and very and highly valuable. Try not to sell them early game because you are going to need them later. All right. So the jetpack I started to tell you about that is used with the space bar. Very handy to move around a landscape with it. Obviously to get over obstacles and stuff like that. Um, but it is also used in a great many other ways for us. 
So as we head over here, we can use the jetpack to, you know, save some running juice, if you will. But as we head up this hill here, I'm going to show you something. There's a little something you can do in order to break rocks if you run out of mining beam. So this is your mining beam, and if I happen to run out and I don't have any carbon, I can hit a plant using the Q button, like this. And I can break it open and get a little bit of carbon out of each one. You gotta be close enough. And yes, you can even get ferrite dust. You're not going to hurt yourself doing this, so you don't have to worry about that. No idea why. Punching rocks, but whatever. There we go. Now I got some ferrite dust. See? So you can do it that way. But, it's, but another thing that is useful for the Q button, you see he kind of thrusts a head like that when he's doing it, is if you hit your jetpack at the right moment, you can thrust jump ahead, which saves you a lot of time and effort. Down we go. So getting down surfaces like that, very handy. Now, this is your ship. This is your starter ship. Your starter ship and its landing area has four of these oxygen plants. So go ahead and grab them while you can. They're very handy. You'll get about 90 out of them, give or take. You also are supposed to hit this particular iteration ball. This is a recovery ball, kind of like a black box on airplanes or something like that. I'm not going to read the number. It just says iteration, deleted. Now, it, the word iteration is referring to you. It means that you, being the iteration, have been deleted. Boundary separation failure was likely, so it removed you from the equation, if you will. Vessel. 16 empty. You're going to see the number 16 in a great many ways. Cause, sentinel intervention, deliberate transfer. So the sentinels intervened and they deliberately took you out of the equation. In other words, they killed you. So it generated a fresh iteration. Now you'll notice that the communicate that the top of the bar there is in purple, not red. What this means is that there is an entity telling you that you were deleted on purpose by something else. And in your case, you've been regenerated in order to invade this system over here. So we have a fresh iteration generated, anomaly containment prepared. So we are an anomaly in this area. So we're going to broadcast back to this. Iteration, broadcast received, traveler anom anomaly detected, we are a traveler. Anomaly is compliant, position log, system integrity scan initialized. So from the very beginning, you're going to see purple, and you're going to see red. Red indicates the atlas, purple indicates the void. The void has placed us in the universe of the atlas. So here we are, starting our adventure. So get used to hearing about the void and the atlas. While we're here, we're going to pick up some goods. Looks like we got sodium nitrate out of that, so that's good. Very hard to get early game. Some condensed carbon. Some dihydrogen, it only gives us a few of that. In this canister, again, we're going to take the rusted metal. And it gave us some more carbon. So, we're doing good so far. This final item right here is going to be... A damaged piece of machinery which has living slime on it. So we're going to go ahead and take that. And it gives us something from this unit. In this case, it gives us nanites. Nanites are a form of currency. So we're going to be using that currency. All right, and we're to our ship. Now, the next item on our, uh, it's, as you can see at the bottom right, tells us we have to board the crash ship. So let's go ahead and jump inside and go through the dialogue. Iteration, not going to read the number, 4924 at the end, G, online. Atlas connection intermittence. We're in yellow right now, so it's just Starship Diagnostics and uh, your exosuit talking to you, and that's it. Launch thrusters offline, pulse engine offline. I find myself alone on a strange world, unequipped and in danger. I have no memory of how I got here. No sense of it before. But this ship at least seems to recognize me. The controls react to my touch, or at least to that of my exosuit. I'm not dead yet, and this ship is a lifeline out to the stars. I'm going to read the log. Log 4925A, unavailable, substituting data. Exosuit connected. Suggestion, pilot should perform maintenance. Select the desired repair path. 
or repair the ship. Self-guided repair protocol is initiated. Okay, so it tells us that the pulse engine's critically damaged, and that's what we need to work on, especially and as well as the launch thrusters, as it says on the right-hand side. So let's go ahead and get started on that. So off we go, and we're going to do what it tells us to do. It needs us to criti pardon me, fix the launch thrusters, which are critically damaged. Press E to exit our ship. So now that we're fully charged, there we go. So, so it's going to give us a guidance. It's going to give us a step-by-step -step process. We have to repair the pulse engines with the metal plate. To do that, it says to collect ferrite dust, which we've done, 50 of 50, and to craft the metal plate. So if we go into our inventory here, we can do it right in the inventory of our ship if we wish, or we can do it in our inventory of our cells, if you will. Uh, we can't do it in the multi-tool. Multi-tool has no in inventory, so let's just stick to the ship for now. Metal plate requires 50 ferrite dust, and we go in here, and we select it. If you wait long enough, you can return on your own. It'll usually kick you out, there we go, and give you the next step. So just pay attention. Partially complete. Board the starship and consult ship guidance. So it's going to go back to the ship. Iteration, 4924G again. Functional. So it's talking about us. We're functional, right? Starship critically damaged. Vital ingredients missing. Unable to synthesize required components. Pulse engine requires hermetic seal. We're going to request assistance. Recommendation. Iteration comparison reels hermetic seal nearby. Salvage planetary chart from distress beacon cache. And okay, so we're going to go repair our repulse engines. We have to exit and go over here to consult this. So going back to the beacon. Appear inside the beacon's housing, as well as its distress broadcast unit. As well as its distress broadcast unit, it contains a planetary chart. So we're going to take the chart. Okay, where to? We have to do this. We go into our inventory. And you see the planetary chart is pulsing. It says, it says to press E to plot the route, or route, depending on how you like to say it. Ah, that must be a ship or two passing over. Pretty cool. Nice cloud cover. It's hard to see anything with the cloud cover these days, but that's okay. And tells us we need to go in that direction, so we're going to find our hermetic seal over there. So, shall we? Let's do it. So, a couple things we're going to do along the way. We're going to pick up things that we need. Any items that could come in handy in our travels. You see, we slow down the certain areas that we can't climb up, so we're going to use our jetpack for that. And you see our run juice ran out, so we're going to have to run, walk a little bit slower for a moment. And then it picks up again. Alright. And when it's fully charged, I'm going to continue to go. Now, I do want to get there quicker, so... Thrust jump is what I'm going to do. So my jetpack runs out. Try to stay low to the ground, because if you go too high, you can actually damage yourself. Okay. Ooh, got some sodium over here. Let's grab it. We could use it. Uh-oh, storm is coming. Before we go there, we see that there's some uh, condensed carbon in the distance. You can pick those up. You're, it's less effective from a distance, but since we need to get moving, we need to pick this up as quickly as possible. So we're going to hit it now. There we go. And off we go. Where's our spot? Over there. Okay. Now, as the storm progresses, you notice our bar on the top, uh, our hazard bar is starting to drop faster. It's got two arrows now. And when the storm gets to its maximum toxicity, it should go to three. Sodium's your friend here, so use it. Wow, that's really toxic, isn't it, here? Alright, looks like we're heading up there. So let's drop down the slope here. We're at three bars. We're going to keep an eye on it. We're going to pulse our jetpack. Now, the thing about toxic atmospheres is your um, your walking, your running ability is enhanced in a toxic environment, so you can run for longer periods of time. Take advantage of that. It will tell you again at 25% that it's dropping, and it will tell you again at 10, and then 5. 
The longer you wait, the more it'll take to recharge. If you have batteries, it'll just use one battery no matter what position you're in. So once it drops to about 20%, I'm going to recharge. Unless we make it there in time. Looks like we've made it. Okay, good. So we're going to run to the first one that we have here. And we're protected from the storm, as you can see. Okay, so a couple things we're going to do here. Number one, any plants that you find in these things will give you carbon usually. And more than once. So gather it. Use the free items that you're getting. Two, three. Look at that, 120 carbon just from those two little plants. You're going to find other things. These cubes will give you navigation data. And sometimes they'll just give you nanites, like this one did. Other items, like this one, will normally give you nanites, but it's being used for our mission here. And then finally, this one is first aid. If you have knocked a heart down or one of your plus signs down, you take one of these, it'll increase it by one. We haven't damaged anything, so we shouldn't have to worry about it. Accessing archive. Notice it's in purple. Six of seven. Entry 4924A follows. No one. Psst. Making this recording in case. Psst. Leaving behind. Psst. In the fabricator. Psst. Might be of some use. Psst. Pfizer damage. Psst. Can't find ship. We're going to recover the supplies. The log finishes and the machine whirs to life. Spitting out supplies. I have the hermetic seal. I need to repair my ship. Whoever it was that led me here. Whoever left this message. Perhaps they found themselves in the same situation as I do now? Hmm, indeed. Okay, so we have our hermetic seal. And now we need to work our way back. The problem is... Where's our ship, right? So it says, use your analysis visor. Let's hit, let's hit F. Oh, we don't have an analysis visor. It requires a carbon nanotube. So, we have to begin our installation. So let's open up our installation over here. And we're going to put our analysis... I'm going to put it right here. Put our analysis visor in. But we require a carbon nanotube. So to do that, we want to go to our exosuit and make one. With enough carbon, as you can see, it used up some carbon. And we make a carbon nanotube. Back to the multi-tool. We repair it. It is now complete. We now have an analysis visor. Now if we hit F, we go into a special view where we can now see things. For instance, these animals. And they'll give us money for finding them. 1600 we get for that animal. Okay? And it's a good idea to find as many as you can. You can also analyze certain items on the ground. See, this is, it has carbon, we know, but it also will have a secondary element. In this case, now we can get oxygen from them, too. And locate the starship is right there. And if you highlight it, use your E button. You don't have to do that. You can usually highlight things. For instance, if I highlight this, I can find a copper deposit if I want. If I go back to this, I can usually circle it. I can also put down a marker Okay, so let's go to our starship. Now, you'll see, like, if I if I analyze this, this has a secondary element of oxygen. So if I now gather it, I get ferrite dust, as you can see, and I'll get one oxygen from it. This one, same thing. Carbon and some ferrite dust, of course. We'll usually get some oxygen from it, too. All right, so let's head back to our ship since now we know where it is, since we have an analysis visor. I would, gather, I would gather that, but I think we need to head back sooner than later. You see, the storm isn't here right now. And the sooner we get back to the ship, the better off we'll be. Oof, that was close. I almost hurt myself. Okay. Let's gather some sodium plants. Then boost our way up this hill. I think we ought to stay a little lower than usual. Uh-oh, life support's low. Gather some oxygen while we're running past it. It's always good to learn how to keep an eye open on things. And again, we're going to pick up plenty of dihydrogen. We are going to need it. There we go. That's worth taking the time out to grab some while we're going. Up, up, up we go. As you can see, it's right over there, so obviously it's on the other side of the hill from us. Oh, ran out of run juice skin. <laughs> As I like to call it. And I'm going to do a thrust jump now to get there a little bit quicker. Get some more of these dihydrogen crystals. They are really handy, and it's good to have some if you can.
There we go. Good deal. Oh, life support's really low now. So to recharge our life support, we can hit our X button again. See, our mining beam's really low, so we're going to go ahead and put some carbon in. Actually, I'm going to use condensed carbon because it uses a lot less, as you can see. And we're also going to recharge our life support at 9%. We can use oxygen or that life support gel that we have. Let's use the oxygen since we got plenty of it. See? Not bad, right? Down we go. Easy, easy. All right, good deal. Oh, looks like we got some buried technology right there. I don't think we can pick it up, though. Yeah, it's too it's too deep in the ground. All right, so we're back to our ship. Let's go ahead and hit the tab button. Now that we're close enough, we can access it. So we're going to put the hermetic seal in. And we now have that part repaired, as you can see. It's now repaired. Now, if you want to move some of these around, you can use your E button to move the technology. And if you just want to take it out and not use it temporarily, you can store it like that. It's valueless at only 16 nanites. There's no reason to do so. So I would just leave it in there for now. I'm going to move my shield over as well. And I like to always have my pulse drive down below and have these separated so that way I can line up any uh, upgrades I get. So as we exit, it tells us that our launch thruster is critically damaged and we need pure fyrite and a dihydrogen jelly. So it's telling us to do the dihydrogen jelly first. Now to do that, it says craft dihydrogen jelly. We need dihydrogen to do that. Good thing we gathered plenty of it, right? So let's go ahead and make that. There you go. We're going to make one. And now, if we go into our ship's inventory right here, we now can use that to repair that one other item. Next is pure ferrite. So it's telling us that that's what we need. And at the bottom, it says to craft a portable refinery. We need a metal plate in order to do so. So let's go back to our inventory, make another metal plate. Here it is. We had just enough ferrite to do it and to go ahead and deploy it. Now, you deploy it by hitting, the instead of the X button for charging things like this one, you hit the Z button for building. This is where all your building area is going to be. Right now, the only thing we have is the portable refiner, which requires a metal plate, which we just made, 30 oxygen. So let's go ahead and drop that down here. Very handy unit to have. You have to charge it first. So the first thing you need to do is either oxygen or carbon. Uh, in this case, it's only going to allow us to use the carbon. If you put condensed carbon in here, it is more um, efficient, but when you take the portable refiner down, it'll only give you regular carbon back. So if you do need regular carbon later on, go ahead and use it. I'm going to take this, but if I hit my C button, I can cut it in half and cut it in half again. I'm just going to put a little bit in, 25% charge. And then I'm going to do something different. I know it wants us to make pure ferrite, but you remember that rusted metal we gathered? I'm going to put that in here instead. And let's fully charge this up. Let's put it all in here. This takes about a minute and a half to get done, but we're, we're taking the 128 rusted metal we have and turning it into twice as much in ferrite dust. And we do need it, so let's go ahead and gather it. So, as you can see at the bottom right, in order to make pure ferrite, we have to refine regular ferrite into pure ferrite, but we need 50. It's a one-to-one -one ratio. We need 50 ferrite. Now, I could go around and gather some rocks and stuff like that, but I also don't want any more of this metal in my inventory. So I want to go ahead and take care of two birds with one stone, as they say, and I want to refine that into ferrite and then take that and turn 50 of it into pure ferrite. So let's get that done. While you're waiting, you can go ahead and jump in your ship and chill out and let your hazard protection go ahead and recharge. Meanwhile, if you look to the bottom right, you can see our little refiner is over there buzzing away and working on what we told it to do. So once it turns green, we can go ahead and jump in there. Now jump out of the ship and check it out. Just going to wait a couple extra moments. It's still operating. You can hear it in the distance, chugging away. There we go, and there's our ferrite dust. So let's go ahead and pull it out. Now, we need to put ferrite dust back in, so I could have just went straight in there. But we only need 50, right? So we're going to cut it in half, cut it in half again. I can't cut it in half again and get 50, but what I can do is I can go over here and I can lower the output amount to 50, and then begin. And it only takes about six, seven seconds to do. And done. So we're going to take our ferrite dust out, 
and our purifieride out. Is there anything else we want to do? You remember in our inventory we gathered up something called living slime? Let me show you what this does. Living slime, viscous uh, fluids turn into living slime. Living slime turns into something called runaway mold. It's a one-to-one -one ratio, but it does take some time to, chart to, to get it done. So let's let that go, and I'll show you what happens with the runaway mold. In the meantime, we need to repair our ship. So let's take our 50 pure ferrite. Our ship is now repaired. And as you can see, everything's ready to go. Okay, and if, is everything really adjusted in all of our areas? Yep, it looks like we got everything we need. So it's going to tell us to that our launch system's are online, that we should take our portable refiner and get in our ship and get out of here. I can't, couldn't agree more, but we do have a few things to, look, to finish up here. So let's go to our portable refiner. It's just about finished. We're going to take our runaway mold, and what does it turn into? Nanites. This goes a little quicker. It's a 5 to 1 ratio, so it's really not terribly valuable. But it did give us 12 nanites, so at least that's something. I'm going to take the runaway mold, and I'll be destroying it soon, but we don't need it anymore. Now, is there anything else in our inventory? And if you if you hit your center button, it'll discard something. We don't need that anymore. Um, we can probably do other things in here if we wish, but it's not really necessary. Now, one thing I did say we need to do is make some batteries. If you go here, you can see you have an ion battery recipe requiring 10 cobalt and 5 ferrite dust. I'm going to make, according to this, I can make 23 more of them, so I can make 24. And there we go. All of our cobalt's gone. We have about 100 ferrite dust left. And that was another reason for gathering it. I like to put my items that I'm keeping down here and put most of my minerals up, up top where I can access them. This I'm going to be hanging on to for a later date, but this I'll be selling. We got, what, 50,000? Yeah. So, and then there's our sodium nitrate. So, there we go. All lined up and ready to go. Good deal. We're all set here. Now, to pick this up, we hit the center button. And as you can see, it now ends up in our inventory over here. Okay, so we are all done here. There's nothing more for us to finish up and do over here. I do recommend getting a little extra pure ferrite, but I leave that up to you. And as it becomes nighttime here, we're going to go ahead and take off. Excellent. So, use W to take off, hold it down, and you can fly around in your ship now. That little square icon on your display on the radar is that ship in front of us. It picks it up as a ship. Okay, good deal. Now, one thing I do like to do, this is called first person view. I prefer going to the settings menu over here and selecting this. And I usually hit hold down my control button and press 1 to give it a hot key. And that way I can switch to third person view. I prefer to have this view because as you can see, you can see more around your ship and around you. Usually not a bad idea. It looks like we've gotten lucky here, folks. This is really lucky. This particular building here has a landing pad. That's what these rings are. If you hit the E button as you get close, it'll take you into its landing pad. That landing pad will save you from using your thruster uh, fuel. Now, the second thing that's great about this and being lucky about it is this building here is a specialized building. They differ from race to race, but this building here will has a radar uh, equipment on it that can find a discarded ship. So we're going to use that here in just a moment. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to find this particular location. What does this give us? It gives us a save point, right? It's also going to give us a piece of navigation data as well as 10 nanites every time you find one. Very handy to get those. Here's another box. I'm going to grab the rusted metal for now. I may not be turning that into anything depending upon how much ferrite dust we can get. Okay, it looks like we got some oxygen out of it. Let's check the yellow box. Ooh, we got a microprocessor. Those are really handy to have. Hang on to those. They're very, very valuable and useful. Now, if we look over here, we got two buildings. Nothing special. You can go in and get some more nanites from there, which we'll do in a minute. Pick up anything in these boxes that you can. And you can you can spin chairs around. You can talk to the entity. In this case, it's a Corvax system. And sometimes the plants have carbon in them. You can check them if you wish, but in this case, I didn't get so lucky. All right, let's talk to the analyst. He's going to be speaking in a language I don't understand. So it says, as I approach the electronic life form, they instinctively start to analyze me from head to foot. They chitter animatedly, their head tilted to one side. Stationed on such a hostile, toxic world, they must see so few novelties. 
And as you can see, we don't understand a word he's saying in Corvax. I mime that I know little of their kind or how they communicate. In response, the lights on their masks flash a repeated series of three, building in intensity. I don't know what it wants as far as three is concerned. I'm sure it is regards to one of these. He probably needs the rare metal, but the ferrite dust will work for now. So let's go ahead and give him that. They flicker with mild disappointment. Nevertheless, they rest their hand on my visor and thank me with a transfer of language. So we did get a word out of it called Corvax. That's good. Let's go to the transmission tower. Now these transmission towers give us something. And as you can see, let me read it through. Long ago, it seems an automated distress call went unanswered. So it happened long ago, like it said. If I can crack the encryption pattern, I could potentially extract the coordinates. 1, 2, 6, 24, 120. So as you can see, it gives you a mathematical uh, test, if you will, or quiz. And if you look closely, well, 1 plus 1, I think it's in multiples. So 1 times 2 is 2. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 times 4 is 24. 24 times 5 is 120. So 120 times 6 is what you want here, which would be 720, as you guessed. It goes green. If I chose the wrong one, it would have went red, and I wouldn't get anything from it. Distress signal coordinates discovered. It's going to do a pullback like it does right now. Sometimes you can get a look at the ground. Looks like we got another building there to the east and a little bit south. And it's going to just look down at the ground real quick like this. And then when you stop, there's your distress beacon. 20 hours away on foot if you want to try to get there again on foot. All right, so let's exit our little building here. And before we go into space, before we even leave this area, let's go ahead into these little, um, I guess we'll call them tents and see if there's anything valuable in here. This one doesn't appear to have anything of value. Let's go to the other one. And here we are. Ah, remember this thing? But now we can get nanites from it. Usually about between 50 to 80. There we go, 54. And sometimes there's other things in here you can pick up, but this time, no. Alright, so we're done here. We're going to go back to our ship, and we're going to check out the distress signal in just a moment. So we're going to take off. You notice it doesn't give me any, any, pardon me, any indication of launch thruster issues. So that's good. We didn't use any fuel. How far away is this building? It says it's an hour in pulse, uh, full thrust. It's still an hour away. So and that's real time, folks. Real time. So let's head out into the space, which will go faster. As you can see at the bottom left, we were going 350 there for a moment. We can go as high as. There you go. Almost 2,700, right? But what we're going to do is, rather than test our ship's systems, we're going to go there to that distress beacon. If you get it right in the center here, and then hold down your pulse drive, which is your space button, you'll lock in on it, and it will take you there. So we've tested two systems thus far. And it will take us all the way around the planet to it in a much shorter amount of time. And as you enter the atmosphere, remember we were doing 2,700? Yeah, look how much slower we go as we enter the atmosphere. It keeps dropping as we get lower and lower. So. There we go. About 180, it looks like. And there we go. Now, the distress beacon that we're looking at is dead on our radar. And if you look at your regular radar, you notice there's a square, bo square box again. That means we have a ship here. As you can see, there's our ship. And the ship has been there for a while, okay? So this one's going to be busted up pretty bad. So let's go ahead and bring it in and land. So you remember how busted up your ship was? You had two pieces of technology that were broken. Well, these ships, and this is a hauler, um, which it won't tell us what it is just by looking at it, so we actually have to claim it. It uh, is in probably a lot worse damage than that. So let's gather some resources while we're here. Okay, it looks like we got some hydrogen. Let's get the yellow box. Condensed carbon, and we're going to get the damaged machinery. Again, we're going to go ahead and grab the residual goop this time. And 
it gave us some more nanites. Okay, good deal. So we got everything from the site. But if we go to this ball, remember this distress beacon like was at our site? A high-tech ship's emergency system is activated as I climb on board, and a hologram appears before me. The lights in the mask it, wear, it wears seem wide and dim. The pilot calmly reports news of its imminent demise. The noise of explosions and tearing metal can be heard. The hologram disappears, leaving an array of glittering technologies and devices behind it. Some of them still look operational. So what we can do is look for functioning technology or search for transported goods. I'm going to go for functioning technology because it's very handy to get that. It's probably going to give me... Up, oh, see, the research ship check carries fascinating technological advances. I scan a blueprint and can now construct one of these advances myself. So it gives us what's called a teleport receiver. We install this in our ship and it allows us to transfer items to our ship from a longer distance away. But we need antimatter, which we don't have the recipe for, and three wiring looms, which we can't make, we have to buy, and they're very expensive. But it's good to know. Now, what happens is when you get this, it automatically puts it into your log normally that you have to build this. But we haven't got as far as fixing our ship systems yet. What are we going to do with the ship, though? Let's check it out. But as you can see, a lot of damage is in here. It really doesn't have the room for it. It is a C-class ship like our own. And it still has the launch thrusters and the pulse engine are both damaged. I don't think we have the recipe yet to make anything. But we're going to go ahead and claim the ship anyway. So if you go to the bottom right, compare. You can exchange it if you wish, but we're just going to claim it. Because we really, if we, if we just exchange it, we would have a broken ship and no way off the planet. So let's just go ahead and claim the ship and it adds to our collection. And if I remember correctly, nope, we can, we can build a hermetic seal. So as you can see, we have the ability to make one, so let's make one. We also need at least one metal plate, right? And we needed a dihydrogen jelly. We also need pure ferrite, right? So we should really drop down a refiner. There we go. Put some fuel in. Doesn't make a difference how much. And let's get our ferrite dust, which we don't have enough. We need more. So guess what? All that fer that uh, rusted metal we're going to go ahead and work with right now. Now as we look around the site, there's other things we can grab. We can get some resources and stuff like that if we wish. While we're here, we're going to scan a couple of other animals. They're going to give us a little bit of money for scanning them. If you hit your right mouse button while you're in scan mode, it'll zoom in. And you'll see it also tells us how many species are on the planet. Two of seven. Why is that important? Because if you go to your discoveries option in here and you look at your fauna, two of seven discovered, and you select it, if you find all of them, you'll get a bonus of 1,750 nanites. That's a lot. We really could use it. But we've got one, two, three more ground creatures to find, a flying creature, one more of those, and an underground creature in order to make all the amounts here. So if we look around, anything that has a green dot we've discovered, anything with a red dot, is undiscovered. There we go. So that's three. Any more birds in the sky that we haven't discovered yet? Those are not them, but those are nice little birds. <laughs> we also have other things here, like the sentient plant, but acquiring one of those would allow us to get attacked by sentinels. We want to hold off on that on early game. I don't see any other creatures that we can discover right now. So it looks like this one's going to be left alone for the time being. So let's get back to our... There it is. Refiner, which is almost done. Looks like it's finished. Okay, so we have ferrite dust. We're going to take that much. Actually, you know what? We're going to make some extra. There we go. I'm going to make 150 because I want to have some extra for the next planet. I, I re recommend getting some extra of the pure ferrite. Because when you build something, like a building, sometimes you require pure ferrite to build certain components. So grab some extra pure ferrite in case you need it. And there we go. And we can pick up our refiner. 
we go into our inventory, we can now repair this. So, your ferrite. That's repaired. And a hermetic seal, metal plate. All done. Now we could we could replace, uh, pardon me, repair the uh, shield if we want, getting chromatic metal. But we're not going to do that right now. Nor am I going to fly this ship right now because it's in bad shape. So we're going to hold off on that for the time being. What we're going to do is go back to our original ship and take off. All right. But don't worry, we'll be able to pull that ship in later. So let's head out and upwards. We've used up some more of our launch fuel. So as we head out, it wants us to engage the pulse engine. Now I'm gonna to go to first person view because one of the things I wanna see is I wanna see how many planets are in this system. Looks like we got some planets out there. Ooh, that looks pretty. Let's head in this direction and check it out because we can't actually scan it. We're too close to this planet's atmosphere. Maybe we'll get lucky and it's a paradise planet. It is! All right, and it looks like there's a space station near it, so that's going to be really, really handy. So let's keep going. You'll notice at the bottom right it says that we have a communication coming in right now. I want to get as close to this planet as possible, because I'm sneaky like that. If we answer it now, it's going to direct us probably to the planet we were just on. So I'm going to hold off answering the message until we get there. Now, our fuel is going to be running low soon low soon. We need a certain amount of items in order to refuel our pulse drive. So we have to be careful of that. If I go back to this menu, at the bottom right you see the lightning bolt. That's indicating how much fuel we have left. And that line in there is just getting dangerously low. So what we need to do is get something called tritium in order to refuel it. So as we get closer here, we're looking for a asteroid field. And hopefully, we'll find one close enough to this planet that we can take it on. And we're almost out of fuel. we got to be very careful now. Will we make it is what it boils down to. Okay. So we're going to stop here. Now, if I do a scan, if there's anything out here that has tritium, it'll find it. See the icon up there? Oh, we happen to find our asteroid field. Good. So we use our guns to shoot these rocks, and we should get gold, silver, and... We can get it. More gold. There we go. Tritium, obviously. Now you got to watch your guns, because your guns here can overload. We just want to get as much tritium as we can. We've also got tritium on board our ship already, but it's good to get extra. Alright, good deal. More gold. Hoping to get some more tritium. There we go. Ooh, a tritium hypercluster. Very handy. We do need those later, just in their rock form like that, but for our intents and purposes, I don't know why that rock won't break. There it goes. That was weird. Alright. And yes, you can fly backwards on occasion. Alright. Let's stop for a second and take a look. So we got four of these. We have 200 tritium now. The tritium is used to charge that up. You can see it took up a quite a bit, but these... Look at that. We're up to 500 now. We got gold, and we got a gold nugget. They're valuable, but more importantly, we need the gold. So let's go ahead and grab that. We're also out of launch thruster juice, which requires either Starship launch fuel or uranium. Well, we can make Starship launch fuel. Oh, there's the recipe right there, but it requires a metal plate to make it. I'm going to go ahead and make one because I need it, and we're not going to get any soon. If we take it and drop it in, fully charged. All right, we're all set now. So we're going to head down to this planet here, and I'm going to see if there's a nice place for us to set up a base. see how pretty the planet is while we're going in. So this paradise planet is, seems to be very interesting and it seems to be a rare one as well. This is a floating island rare paradise planet. 
unbelievable. I have been looking all over all the galaxies for this right now to find myself one that was this pretty. Unbelievable. Well, well, well. See, one of the neat things about this planet is that some of these islands, especially the bigger ones, will have a waterfall feature on them, and you can build on them. Some of them have rocks connecting to each other. Remind you of something? I'm not going to say it out loud, and neither should you. Unbelievable. So, it looks like we have found the one planet that I've been looking for in all of my saves, so I think we're going to be turning this into a, um, a, a real good base for everybody. This will be very, very pretty. I don't see any bubbles on board or anything like that. It'll be a very pretty planet to, to work, with, work with. I don't see any of the islands with the waterfall feature. Oh, wait, wait. That looks like one over there. There it is. So there's your waterfall feature. Very pretty. Okay, so let's look for a building down below. What we're looking for is a place to set up camp. There is one over here. It might be out in the water, though. Let's check it out. Yeah, it's out in the water. That's just a little campground. Not going to help us at all. Another one. So it's time to find a place that we want to make as our home base. Ah, perfect. Absolutely perfect. We're right near the water as well. Excellent. And we got a landing pad that we can use. This is called a minor settlement. So I'm going to get out of the ship here. Just for a moment. First contact, Arjo, is the name of the planet. We'll probably end up renaming this planet at some point. All right, back into our Radiant Pillar, and we've got a communication to get, so let's go ahead and select it. Incoming transmission, source 4925B. Please identify yourself. I'm... Pst. So we're going to identify ourselves this time. You are not pst, alone. Follow the... Pst. The broadcast ends as strangely as it began. The final piece of the signal appears to be a set of planetary coordinates. We're going to input the planetary coordinate. There we go. So it's going to tell us where it is. Now, if we get out of the ship right now, we can see where it is. There it is, up there. So it looks like it's taking us back to our original planet instead of this one. But I really would like to make a base here. So we're going to remember this particular spot. I don't have anything I can drop down here in order to save it. So what we're going to have to do is actually get our coordinates. And this is a good learning experience for coordinates. So we are at negative 4.42, if you look at the top right, and positive 123.02. So we're going to be making a base here at some point. It is a really fantastic area for it as well. I'm really excited about this. Oh, got some plants that we can take some carbon out of. We can talk to someone too if we're here, while we're here. Uh, let me see. Electronics life forms bright greeting suddenly slows. They tap into their personal data while their facial lights dilate and internal systems crash. Columns of streaming data show their power levels spiraling downwards. Corvax, and that's all we can understand. The life form looks for me to help, uh, looks to me for help, then points to my gathered resources with a single slow and desperate movement. Um, I'm going to try ferrite dust instead of carbon. She inserts the element to their slot in their hip. There is no effect. Their max lights go out. They needed carbon, apparently. I wonder if it will work. Well, I guess I should have gave him carbon, huh? Oh, well. I wasn't sure, and I bet most of you have played this game before are probably saying, why didn't you give him the carbon? Encrypted navigation data. Gave us nanites this time. We have a multi-tool that we can get as well. It's a C-Class as well, and this one happens to have an optical drill on it, which would be very handy for us. If we compare, the cost is going to be too great for us to, f to swallow, so we'll come back another time. And finally, we now have a trade terminal we can go to. We get to see what it happens to have. These things are kind of useless to us for now, but for trading out places, so we'll worry about that later. We do have cobalt here. 
carbon nanotubes, hermetic seals. Looks like we can get a lot of those. Starship launch fuel, as you can see, they're very expensive. Ferrite dust, which we can get a lot more of. And I'm going to try to see if I... Do I have enough credits to buy it? I think I do. I do. I'm going to go ahead and grab that because we can use it. Uh, plates, microprocessors, we can get a lot of those. Magnetized ferrite, ionized cobalt. And look, we've got uranium. We can use uranium on our ship from here. Fantastic. This makes it a very valuable commodity for us. Another outside door to get to the outside here. Let's go ahead and grab our navigation point. Excellent. So we can find our way back here. This building should be about the same as the other one was at the other planet. And this building should have the nanites that we desire. There it is. And we're going to grab some encrypted. Ah, good. Navigation data that time. Excellent. Oh, we'll also grab some carbon while we're here. There we go. Looks like we didn't get as much that time, but that's okay. We got a good amount. All right, and it doesn't look like there's any containers over here we can break into or grab. So, all right, we're good. The landing platform sometimes does have some. So if you run around the landing platform, you might be able to find a corner that has some stuff on it. I don't see any here. All right, so this is great. We have gotten an excellent start to our whole run through here. Uh, we are about an hour in, so I'm going to go ahead and call it quits here right now and end this recording at call this episode one of our new save of worlds. Our world save one. Excellent. we got a, some, one heck of a planet here. If you'd like to see what it looks like during the day, if you go into your photo mode, and I'm going to save that to a hotkey right now, you can actually, using the F button, put the sun somewhere else in the sky so you can take a look at the planet you're on. So let's pull back. Take a look around. Very pretty world. Kind of a bluish green. More blue than it is green. There's your islands. Very pretty. And it looks like it has some nice water, a water feature right over here. So that is fabulous. I really, really like this. So this will be a great planet to start out from, and I think we're going to have a great time doing it. So again, folks, I want to thank you all for watching, and we'll see you in the next episode. Take care, everybody.